What's up everyone? Today we're going to do an interesting problem where we are going to implement a stack using only queues to store all our data. So we're going to create a stack object and inside of our stack object we're not going to create any linked lists or anything, we're just going to use queues and those queues are going to store all of the elements in the stack. And by using the, op the queue operations we're going to have to get and return, we're gonna to have to add and return the right elements at the right times. So let's go ahead and dive right into this problem. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is ask a couple questions of my interviewer just for clarification. So the first thing I wanna know is what are the operations that we're actually trying to implement or what exactly are we trying to implement? Because we could implement this big full-fledged stack object with lots of test classes and different things but we presumably don't want to do all that but we don't know exactly what we do need to do so in this case i've specified that i do want push and pop functions but maybe you would implement a size function or a i don't know there are so many other functions that you might want to add but we, so we want to check with our interviewer what exactly they are expecting from us and what functions they want us to add. So in this case, I'm only going to worry about those two functions. So we're going to create a very simple stat class just for the sake of saving time. But you want to double check with your interviewer and you don't want to, more importantly, rather than implementing things that you don't have to, you don't want to implement things that you don't have to implement because it's going to save you a lot of time. So the other thing I want to do is clarify that what they are actually looking for here is a queue as a first in first out and a stack as a last in first out data structure because different people have different ideas of what these mean. So we're going to confirm that that's the case and I'm going to say yes that is the case here because that's sort of the point of the question, right? But the last thing that we need to check is what are the elements in our stack and I'm just going to use integers in this case but you could use whatever you want. So let's dive right in and think about how we're going to solve this question. And so we have, let's like, what we're going to have is we're going to have a queue and we're going to need to basically do one of two things. We need to reverse the queue, right? Because our queue is going to be is going to we're going to add so if we add numbers to the queue we're going to add one let's say we add we're going to add from the front so we add three then two then one and then we take off three and then two so we take off three and then two and then one like that so for our queue and then for our stack it's going to be the reverse so we would have we would add three two one and then we would take off one two three like that so we would go in the opposite direction so if we could just reverse our queue, so if we had this queue here, so let's say we had this queue in our memory, and then we just reverse the queue and ended up with this, then we could just dequeue things the way we normally would, and it would work the way that this, we wanted the stack to work. But then it wouldn't work when we wanted to add elements to it. So we, because we would add elements to the front like this, we would add four, but then when we pop, we would still pop off the one. So we need to think about how we're going to do this. And the fact of the matter is that we're going to have to have a slow operation. And by what I mean by that is that either push or pop is going to have to go through this process every time of basically reversing the list or the queue, because we have basically two options. So we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two queues. So I'm going to have basically a primary and secondary queue. So I'll call it primary and secondary. Like this. And so when we push, so let's just look at what we're going to do here. So we push an item and there are two ways we can do this. So first example is we push an item. We add it to primary. Fine. Now we push another item and we add it to primary. So we're gonna add it like this, and then we push another item, and we add it to primary like this. And so as you can see, our push operation is takes constant time because it's easy to add elements to a queue. But now what we're gonna do is we need to reverse it. So to get, now we wanna pop. So now we're going to pop. 
So we want to remove this element, or we want to remove this element from our queue. And that's going to be difficult because the first element to remove is this one and then this one. So what we can do is we can copy these to our secondary array. So I'm going to NQ1, I'm going to put the one on here. I'm going to, and I'm going to remove it from here. Now I'm going to remove the two. I'm going to put the two on here and remove it from here. And now I have one item left and I can check the length of my queue and I can see that it's one. So I'm going to have just this three and now I can return this three. And as you can see, that takes linear time because we have to copy all the elements over to the other queue. So then we would remove the three and then I'm just go just to make things simpler, I'll say like secondary equals primary and primary equals secondary, but it's gonna be the same queue. I'm just changing which variable is referencing which. So just to make it a little simpler and then we could pop again and it would be the same process. But so that what that's gonna do is obviously our pop operation is gonna take linear time. But we could also do this with a linear time push operation. So let's say we push one and we're going to add one to our primary because there's nothing there. And then we're going to push two. And now what we wanna do is we're going to copy one to secondary. So or we're actually, sorry, we're gonna push two to secondary. And then we're going to copy one from primary to secondary. So we're going to go like that. And so, and then we're gonna swap them again like we did before just like this. And now I'm going to push three. So I push three to there and then I copy the two from here. So I go two to there and then I copy the one. So I go one to here. And now, as and then I'm going to swap them again like this. And now when I want to pop, I just remove from this queue. So I remove the three and then the two and then the one. And so my pop oper operation takes constant time because removing from a queue takes constant time. So this is what we want to discuss with our interviewer because we could do either of these and honestly, they're both good options, but maybe depending on the implement or depending on how you're going to be using this, maybe you want one option versus the other. Like maybe you're going to do lots and lots of end queuing, but you're only going to DQ very infrequently or sorry, you're only going to pop very infrequently. So if you were doing that, then maybe you want the pop to be the expensive one and the push to be the cheap one because you're just not using pop very often. Or maybe you want it the other way around. But these are good distinctions to talk about with your interviewer because they, it shows you that them that you're thinking about this in a very proactive way and that you're thinking about how you're going to use this in the context of their company maybe or its software in general. So. I just arbitrarily, I kind of like this first solution slightly better where we copy it and where we push to the secondary stack and then copy everything over. So I'm going to do that because I think it, it makes more sense to me that we maintain this queue that we just DQ from and it's in the proper order. But you can do the other one. They're both good options, but I'm just going to implement the first one and it should be pretty clear how you could implement the other one. So I'm going to call, just create my class. So I'll call it stack. And we're going to have our two private queues. So I'm going to create a queue. And I'm, I said I was going to do integers. So a queue of integers, I'll call them primary and secondary. And unfortunately, or fortunately maybe, queue is a interface and not an actual or an abstract class and not an actual thing that we can use in Java. So we'll use linked list here and we'll do an integer and we'll create a new one there and we're going to create a secondary. And now we need a constructor, but we're not actually, there's nothing that we actually need to do in our constructor. 
because we're doing this fairly stripped down version of a stack. So I'm just going to create an empty constructor like that. And now let's implement our, so the hard one is going to be the push. So public uh, void push, and it's going to take in an index. So what we need to do is first we're going to remember we're going to add to secondary first and then we're going to copy everything over. So that's pretty easy to start with. We just say secondary equal secondary dot add x and you know so far so good and now we're going to go through primary and we're going to dq everything off of primary and add it to secondary and thus reversing our linked list so we're going to we're not really reversing it but adding our element to the front of the list so we're going to just do a while loop so we'll do while primary is not empty and then all we need to do is pop off of primary or remove from primary and add to secondary so secondary dot add and we are adding primary dot remove just like that and then what we need to do is I'm as I said as I mentioned earlier here I'm sort of doing this funny little swap thing and the reason for that is that that way I don't need to keep track of which queue actually has the data in it and which queue doesn't because we're sort of swapping between the two queues. So this will just make it slightly simpler. So I'm going to now swap so that secondary is equal to primary. So just we like we normally do, I'm gonna create a temp variable that's gonna be primary and then primary equals secondary. and secondary equals temp, like that. And now that's all there is for that one. And I'm going to now implement our pop. So we're gonna return an int and we all we need to do, so first we do need to check that the array or that the queue is not empty, right? Because if it's empty, that doesn't really make sense. So. In this case, you could throw an exception or you might check with your interviewer what they want you to do because different people have different ideas of what the best thing to do is in this situation. I'm just going to throw an error, but I'm going to not worry about it too much because it's not really... I think as long as you acknowledge that this is something that you're thinking about, it's not that important that you you know, you, it might be worthwhile to mention there are different solutions, but it's not that important which solution you choose. So I'm just going to throw an index out of bounds exception. And then if not, I'm just going to return, I'm going to remove an item from the queue, from the primary queue and return it. So that, and that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to just return primary.remove. And that's it and just close this and so now we have a very basic stack but that's implemented using queues so let's go ahead and test and make sure that this works the way we expect so i'm going to create a new queue i'm just going to test the push and the pop so let's say let's just go basically with this example that we've been using thus far so we're going to say push one secondary dot add one so we add one there and then while primary is not empty so primary is empty in this case so we're going to skip down to here temp equals primary sec primary equals secondary so primary equals this one and then secondary equals the old primary which was this uh empty Q. And in theory here, we're not actually using secondary for anything. So we could just create a new queue rather than reusing the old one. But in this case, I kind of like reusing it slightly better because it's empty anyway. And that way we don't have to create a new object every time. But 
it might be slightly cleaner to just create a new secondary queue each time. So you can do whatever you prefer. And so now let's push another one. So we'll push two. And so we add two to secondary. Then while primary is not empty, secondary.add primary.remove. So primary.remove is this one and secondary.add here. So we add one to here like this and we've removed it from here. And now we're going to swap them. So we add this to here, just like that. And then let's maybe, let's pop one. So I'm going to pop. So I'm gonna come down here, it's not empty. So I'm gonna say primary.remove and I'm gonna remove this one, which is two, which is what I expect. And now let's just you know push and pop one more to just double check because that's one case where a lot of times we get messed up in these implementations is when you push and pop and you alternate pushing and popping or when you just do push, 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 pop, 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 pop. Usually one of those cases is if there's a bug, that's where the bug is gonna show up. So I like to test both of those cases. So let's push three. So we come and we add it to secondary like this while primary is not empty, we add the primary to secondary. So we add one to here like this and remove it from here. And then we move this up to here. And finally, let's pop one more. So we're going to say it's not empty. We're gonna remove three, which again is what we expect. And we still have this one left, which is also what we expect. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or on the blog, and I will see you again soon.